In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You want to borrow my microphone? <laughs> the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we commemorate St. Robert Bellerman. For those that knew Father Charles Miller, the former rector of St. John's Seminary, Robert Bellerman was one of his heroes. Robert Bellerman was a reformer after uh, Trent, uh, but he was also a great catechist. And this weekend we commission our catechists uh, who are teaching our youth um, in the faith. But actually we're all catechists, huh? We're all teachers and learners. But we ask Robert Bellerman to intercede for us that we may continue to evangelize and testify to the truth by what we say and what we do, and how we act and conduct ourselves. And when we don't do that so well, we ask the Lord of mercy to heal and to bless, to forgive and to lift up. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And so we pray. O God, who adorned the bishop, St. Robert Bellarmin, with wonderful learning and virtue to vindicate the faith of your church, grant through his intercession that in the integrity of that same faith, your people may always find joy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Check. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I am reminding you, brothers and sisters, of the gospel I preached to you, which you indeed received, in which you also stand. Through it you are also being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures that he appeared to Cephas, then to the Twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brothers at once, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. After that, he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one born abnormally, he appeared to me. For I am least of the apostles, not fit to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me has not been ineffective. Indeed, I have toiled harder than all of them, not I, however, but the grace of God that is with me. Therefore, whether it be I or they, so we preach and so you believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks. thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, his mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. 
the right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. You are my God, and I give thanks to you. O oh my God, I extol you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Come to me, all you who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. <clears throat> A reading from our Holy Gospel according to Luke. A certain Pharisee invited Jesus to dine with him, and he entered the Pharisee's house and reclined at table. Now there was a sinful woman in the city who learned that he was at table in the house of the Pharisee. Bringing an alabaster flask of ointment, she stood behind him at his feet weeping and began to bathe his feet in her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair kissed them, and anointed them with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were truly a prophet, he would know who and what sort of woman this is, who is touching him, that she is a sinner. And Jesus said to him in reply, Simon, I have something to say to you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people were in debt to a certain creditor. One owed 500 days' wages, the other owed 50. Since they were unable to repay the debt, he forgave it for both. Which of them will love him more? Simon said in reply, The one, I suppose, whose larger debt was forgiven. And he said to him, You have judged rightly. And then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? When I entered your house, you did not give me water for my feet, but she has bathed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but she has not ceased kissing my feet since the time I entered. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she anointed my feet with ointment. So I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven. Hence, she has shown great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. And he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Now the others at table said to themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. The Gospel of the Lord. Our scripture readings of late, last Sunday, today's reading in particular, have been about forgiveness. We are a sacramental church. That means that Jesus has given us a means to have a unique and special relationship with him through baptism, to be conformed to him in his life, his death, and his resurrection, confirmation to witness um, as martyr and to serve, and so forth and so on, matrimony for love of, of people to be united with Jesus and their love for each other. And uh, the, one of the most meaningful sacraments, they're all meaningful, but is the sacrament of penance, the sacrament of forgiveness. It has a healing power that, that is so necessary to the human heart and the human soul. You know, God forgives sins, but Jesus has entrusted that sacrament to Holy Mother Church. And so, yes, God can forgive our sins whether we confess in sacramental uh, celebration or not. But when we hear those words, I absolve you of your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, 
There is a healing in those words. There is a healing when someone has wronged you and you say, I forgive you. It builds up their heart, their soul once again. It restores them. It's restorative. We are in an era where we want to also practice restorative justice. But that justice has to be founded on a contrite heart, a humble, humble heart. And so we have this wonderful relationship with Jesus who continues to forgive and to forgive and to forgive, not just seven times, but 77 times. Or all we need to do is humble ourselves and he will lift us up. So today as we journey forth, if there's someone that we need to forgive in our heart and our soul and even verbally, let us do so. Let us bring about peace. Let us recognize the love that God has for us, the restore, restoration of our own souls, our own hearts. So let us give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Let us now offer our humble petitions to our loving and forgiving Lord. For the church, may Christ the Good Shepherd lead all lost sheep back to the fold. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For leaders across the globe, may their hearts be swayed by God's law to respect life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those whose loved ones have suffered from the effects of the global pandemic, may God console them in their grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the students in our faith community, may the Holy Spirit enlighten them in truth and give them joy in their studies. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have recently died, may they enjoy eternal life through the mercy of our loving God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the special petitions which we hold now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all catechists, through the patronage of Robert Bellarmine, for parents who are the first educators of their children in the faith, for our religion teachers, and for all those who hold and teach the Catholic faith, that, that they may be inspired to offer repentance of sin for the glory of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the particular intention of this Mass, for Miguel Isaac, Miguel, and Monica Isaac Tellez, Monica, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our firefighters, for the end of the scourge of the fires on the western United States, for the calming of the storms on the East Coast, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, we ask you to accept our petitions in the name of your Son, Jesus the Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It'll become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart may be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Thank you. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look with favor, O Lord, we pray, on the offerings we set upon this sacred altar, on the feast day of blessed Robert Bellarmine, that bestowing on us your pardon, our oblations may give honor to your name, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you without end, we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plene Sunceli et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis. You are holy indeed, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. 
Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Jose, our Archbishop, Robert, our Auxiliary Bishop, your clergy and faithful people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with our Blessed Patrons, Buenaventura, Junipero Serra, Kateri Tekawitha, with Robert Bellarmine and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Mis hermanos, fiel esta recomendación del Salvador y seguida divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Hágase tu voluntad en la tierra como en el cielo. Danos hoy nuestro pan de cada día. Perdona nuestras ofensas, como también nosotros perdamos que no nos ofenden. No nos dejes caer en tentación y libramos del mal. Líbranos de todos los males, Señor, y concédenos la paz en nuestros días, para que, ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre de este pecado y protegidos de tu privación, mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Tú y es el reino, tú y el poder la gloria por siempre, Señor. <coughs> Señor Jesucristo, que te dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz os dejo, mi paz os doy. No tengas en cuenta vuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia, conforme a tu palabra, con ser la paz, la unidad, tú que vives y reinas por los siglos de los siglos. La paz del Señor es siempre con ustedes. Daos fraternamente la paz, la paz de Cristo. La paz de Cristo. La paz de Cristo. <coughs> Cordero de Dios que quitas el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios que quitas el pecado del mundo, ten piedad de nosotros, ten piedad de nosotros. Cordero de Dios que quitas el pecado del mundo, Danos la paz, danos la paz, danos, danos, danos la paz. Este es el Cordero de Dios que quita el pecado del mundo, dichosos los invitados a la cena del Señor.
It was not you who chose me, says the Lord, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Let us pray. Renewed by the sacred mysteries, we humbly pray, O Lord, that following the example of blessed Robert Bellarmine, we may strive to profess what he believed and to practice what he taught through Christ our Lord. Robert Bellarmine was also responsible for the development of a formal seminary system. And uh, so today, too, let us say a prayer for our seminarians here at St. John's Seminary and, and all those in uh, formation for the priesthood to continue the, the graces of of celebrating the sacraments of our church. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.
Holy God, we praise thy name. Lord of all, we bow before thee. All on earth thy scepter claim. All in heaven above adore thee. In